Now that I have questions in my question bank here, I can set up a quiz activity and <clears throat> use that activity to display um, questions from this question bank when the students um, select the quiz to take it. So if I go back out to uh, my course front page and turn editing on, um, once you have the questions in the question bank, you first create the quiz shell with all of the different settings uh, that you want to use for that. And then uh, once that's created, then you determine what uh, are the questions that are going to be added. So I'll go to add an activity or resource and I'll select the quiz uh, activity. You can see some basic information. I'll click Add. And um, you know, give it a name that's going to show up on the front page. You uh, description is not uh, required, but it's you know good. So you know, read the materials on mass wasting and uh, then take the quiz. You can determine when the quiz is going to open and when the quiz is going to close. I would um, normally have the quiz open for, say, a day and a half. So um, let's say I'm going to give them all day Wednesday and uh, beginning at uh, 8 a.m. on Monday. I uh, normally um, do set a time limit. Mostly I've got uh, multiple choice questions on my quizzes in order to just um, assess, uh, do a readiness assessment on whether the students have uh, engaged with the material for the class, if it's a face-to-face -face class or for the topic if it's an online course. Um, in this case, I'm going to put in 10 multiple choice questions, so I would give the students 20 minutes. That's way more than enough. If I look at the logs on a typical 10, point, a 10 question multiple choice uh, quiz, you'll see that most of the quiz times are four, five, six minutes, so 20 minutes is, is way uh, more than they need. Uh, I um, don't require the students to submit uh, the quiz before that 20 minutes elapses. Um, if there is a student who takes more than 20 minutes when the time limit um, comes up, I have Moodle uh, take whatever has been submitted so far, has been uh, answered so far, and submit that so that the student doesn't lose the, um, the submission. Uh, I haven't set up uh, categories in the grade book yet. We'll talk about that later in the workshop. But um, I normally would give students, let's say, three or five attempts at the quiz. Uh, my idea is that these are low stakes quizzes. They're not worth a large part of the grade. Uh, they are worth enough points to get the students motivated to take them, and, but not so much that I worry about the students doing you know, well on the quiz. Uh, that's actually a good thing. The, uh, you know, the multiple t uh, attempts just uh, encourages the students to spend more time on the topic, and that's a good thing. Um, the default on the quiz is to have every question on, on a separate page, which I find is um, uh, kind of frustrating for the students. This is a 10-point multiple choice uh, quiz. I would either have all 10 questions on one page, or I might break it up into two pages of five questions each. And then um, for my purposes, um, you know, I do want the choices on the multiple choice questions to be shuffled uh, from um, quiz attempt to quiz attempt. Um, the deferred feedback basically means that um, with this 10 point multiple choice quest, uh, quiz, uh, the students basically will 
um, select answers for all 10 questions, hit the uh, submit to, uh, to turn in their submission, and at that point they will see whatever feedback I decide to let them uh, see. So that is why this, uh, this next screen is important. Um, I want the students on attempts one, two, three, and four, for example, to know, um, to be able to go back and review, well, what answer did they answer for a question and whether it was correct or not and how many points they got. But I don't necessarily want them to get the right answer. I don't want the right answers to be shown until after the quiz is closed. Um, so that way students know what questions they got right, what questions they got wrong, but not what the right answers are. And that again will encourage them to go back and study the material more. Um, you know, none of these others really uh, need much, uh, uh, or you don't really need to do much with any of these. So if I click uh, Save and Display now, um, uh, what you'll what a student will see is the title of the quiz, what the directions are, and then Moodle will tell the student all of the different um, um, aspects of the quiz. So the students will know they've got five attempts at this, when it's going to be available, that there's a time limit on it. And one thing I didn't mention, um, I just use the default uh, highest grade. So the student does take the quiz five times, and their fourth time happens to be their best score. I just uh, will give them that. You can use the last attempt. You can use the average of their attempts. But uh, again, I'm my focus is trying to encourage the students to you know, use these quizzes as a learning activity, and so I don't want to penalize them uh, more than I need to. So at this point, there aren't any questions that have been added to the quiz. I've got the quiz itself, but there aren't any questions. But I have all those questions in that category that I set up earlier. Um, so Moodle will tell me as the instructor, there aren't any questions, you better add some. So I'll click Edit Quiz, which you can also get to here under Edit Quiz. Edit Settings is editing the settings on the quiz itself. Editing the edit Quiz is where you determine what questions are on the quiz. So I'll select Edit Quiz. Um, there aren't any questions at this point. The maximum grade by default is 10 points. Um, I will go to the Add menu, and I could actually write questions here, but then the questions are kind of buried in the quiz. I prefer to have them in the course question bank. It makes it easier to move them around from course to course. So I will select, um, if I actually if I selected uh, from a question bank, I could go here to my Unit 1 quiz questions, and I could select that short answer question and add it to the quiz and it will be a specific question that I have selected and every quiz will have that question. Um, the way I've got the students uh, allowing to take the quiz multiple times, I generally create a question bank that's got twice as many at least uh, questions that I want as what I want to have on the exam with the quiz. I'll go add a random question and I'll say I want to draw questions from this category and I'm going to pick 10 random questions and uh, click add and what you'll see is that um, you know, rather than a question that is a, a specific question that's been um, you know, added. Basically, all of these are just placeholders. Um, basically, instructions to tell Moodle that whenever a student comes to take this quiz, go to this category and pick out questions at random from that category. So now I've got a quiz. Uh, I've got the quiz settings set up. I've got questions added to it. If I go to preview the quiz, I'll see what it looks like from a student's perspective. A uh, student will come in, they will see this, that it's a timed quiz, um, and I click Start Attempt. 
And again, you'll see that we have five questions per page. Here's that short answer question that um, was specifically added to the quiz. And then all of these are randomly selected. So I've got four more multiple choice. You can see them on the first page here. You can see the, the timer running down. Uh, if I go to the next page, I'll see again five random questions. And the next page will be the last question. And then if I click finish attempt, it won't submit it right now. It'll tell me, you know, here's the summary. You haven't really answered any of these questions yet. Do you really want to submit uh, with no answers? I could re click on return to attempt here. I could go back here. I can see that none of these have answers yet. So if I you know, go back to look at question two, it's going to pop me back on the first page. Uh, and, you know, I can just start selecting some of these. And go to the next page. And now you'll see that Moodle will give the student indication that, you know, you've got question, you've got answers in on these. So, um, for the East. And now when I go to um, finish this attempt, it will give me an updated summary. And if I want to make sure I go back and answer question number nine, I can go back to that page and put in an answer and then navigate to the end of the quiz again and finish the attempt and click Submit All and Finish. But I'm not really a student in the class, so I won't bother doing that, but uh, you see what it looks like. If, you, if, as instructor, you want to start a new preview, you can see if you start the attempt again, the timer's been reset, the questions have been reset, and the you got the same short answer question at the front because that's been specified, but all these other questions are randomly pulled from that uh, question bank.